Hi everyone, I'm Steve here again with Dr. Nario. Dr. Nario is at Biointegrative Health Center in Reno, Nevada. You can check him out online. And we are going to talk about semaglutide. So thanks for being with us, doctor. Hi, Steve. Thank you for having me again. Always a pleasure. Okay. Uh, this is all the hype right now. Semaglutide. Um, so what is it? Well, Steve, semaglutide, also known as Wegovi or Ozempic, is a hot item for weight loss, especially used by celebrities and uh, the likes uh, to bring their dad bods to hunk bods again. It is a medication used to treat diabetes too. It belongs to a class of medications known as what we call glucagon-like peptide one receptor agonists. Thus, you will always hear GLP-1 um, uh, agonists. GLP-1 receptor agonists works by mimicking the action of incretin hormone, GLP-1, which stimulates insulin secretion. It produces glucagon secretion, which helps lower blood sugar levels down, but this is where the weight loss action comes in. It slows the gastric emptying and also promotes satiety or meaning fullness. It also increases resting energy expenditure, meaning when you're at rest, you're burning up calories, you're, you're, for, you're creating energy. And an extra add on there would be improving sleep. So just like, let me give you some numbers here. 14.9% um, weight loss in 68 weeks. This is how powerful this, this uh, medication is. And 14.9% average weight loss, again, in, as, as I mentioned, is a very hard to reach goal for a weight loss drug. So this is one of the stronger ones that reach this. And some numbers, more numbers here, 32% of patients lose 20% of their initial body weight. And another one would be 70% of patients lose at least 10% of initial body weight. Um, and also FDA approved for diabetes um, and also weight loss, specifically Wigovi. All right. So um, this is a peptide. We've talked about peptides before. Uh, we did a little chat um, maybe a week or two ago on a sleep peptide. A peptide is a short chain of amino acids. And that's what this is, right? Mm -hmm. That's right, Steve. Okay. So... Um, would you, would you say it's controversial? Right now it is. It's just um, some celebrities wouldn't want to uh, divulge this secret on why, why they're losing weight so fast. So it becomes controversial because it's actually labeled as a double-edged sword. So there are some good things and bad things about this, which we'll be discussing uh, in a bit. But again, as a clinician, I see the importance of this if used the right way. And it's not for everybody, but you'll find out later on why. Okay, so um, you talked a little bit about the benefits. I guess the benefits are kind of obvious. Weight loss. Um, and you mentioned a few other things, but is there any other obvious benefits? Well, Steve, semaglutide, always we call the game changer in weight loss, uh, related to, again, the, 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 the higher, one of the highest results in terms of this, this losing weight. But the real the reason I like using it is for other benefits and it, uh, that it brings, as I mentioned about improving sleep and also energy expenditure. But if you're on semaglutide, there are cardiovascular benefits. It actually reduces the risk of major adverse cardiac events, such as heart attack, stroke, cardiovascular death, especially if you have diabetes too, this is actually the one for you. These cardiovascular benefits are thought to, re to result from various <clears throat> mechanisms involving lowering blood pressure, lowering cholesterol, and even especially the body weight. Another one is renal or kidney protection. It includes also, again, when you're, when you're diabetic, that's one of the more common complications you'll have, kidney failure. This slows down this chronic kidney disease of, of, of diabetics. And same, it also, also um, helps the kidney when you lower blood sugar, blood pressure, and also other cardiovascular risks. One that is actually standing out out there is the neuroprotective effects, meaning brain. And uh, GLP-1 receptors are also expressed in the brain where they play a role in regulating appetite, food intake, and energy balance. Uh, these medications have actually been studied, studied preclinically and has been seeing good effects with Alzheimer's and even Parkinson's. So that's in the works. 
But that's why I like this medication is because it's not only focusing on weight loss. As you can see, the whole body benefits from it. You know, what do you think? Do you think, because, you know, me being on TRT, which you know about, that makes me healthier in every way. So all those benefits you just named, it kind of makes me wonder, is there a direct and maybe I'm asking the question wrong, but is there a direct correlation to those benefits from the medication or a combination of, or is it that, Hey, you're getting leaner, you're getting healthier, you lose, you, you have less weight all when that happens, almost everything in your body's going to improve. Right? So right. what do you think it is? You think it's a direct cause of the medication or is it a combination of, Hey, you're healthier because you lost 30 pounds of body fat. Right. So that's a good, that's a good um, point that you brought up, Steve. A good example that I can give you here is if you use um, semaglutide, you actually, uh, and at the same time, you will maximize the weight loss effect if you're on hormones. So what I do as a strategy for patients, I correct their hormones first. Because on studies, when you have optimal hormone levels, semaglutide works better, not only for weight loss, but also for the other things that I just mentioned to you. So semaglutide brings to the table direct and indirect good effects. But as again, as I see it, weight loss, you just lose so many problems with that inflammation, um, cardiovascular risks, and even uh, joint destruction or tissue destruction. Weight is something that we need um, to solve in this country. And it's actually one of the bigger pandemics. I think uh, for me, it's bigger than the coronavirus because it's been happening ever since and it's not that recognized. Yeah, for sure. Totally agree. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the dose because I've heard a lot about the dosage. And is it the same dosage for everybody or is it, you know, you're bigger or does everyone start the same? And I, I've, I've heard a lot about the dosage. And uh, what, what, what's your take on it from, from what you do with, at your clinic? Well, Steve, with, uh, with the dose, I mean, with the highest dose, uh, 2.4 milligrams per week, actually 16.2% weight reduction has been seen. And the dosing schedule usually is for one to four weeks, 0 0.25, five to eight weeks, 0 0.5, and so on and so forth until you get to 2.4 milligrams. But here's the thing, we don't get that far. The, the thing here is as the higher you go with dosing, the more side effects you will feel. And later on, I'll tell you what these are, but that's the point. You need to go and just use low doses and that will be enough to see the effects of weight loss. And usually for my clients, it ends up in the 0 0.5 milligrams. And as I remind you, the highest would be 2.4 milligrams. As you can see, going low and slow is the key when you use semaglutide. And the thing here is dosing modifications when you have renal or kidney problems, we, change, we adjust the dosing. Um, and also for, uh, when you're taking drugs orally, um, usually no problems with that other medications or interactions, but just caution with people when you're, when you're diabetic, you use insulin as well and oral diabetic medications because of the lowering of the blood sugar. So just, that's why you just keep an eye on that. And here's the highlight of the show. Most of the time we talk about semaglutide the side effects, number one, nausea, 44% usually in relation to Wegovy or, uh, or uh, Ozempic. Uh, this is the number one reason why people fall off the, wa the wagon. You cannot handle the nausea because it makes your blood, uh, your, your GI tract move so slow or gastroparesis as we call it. And um, one of the things that we do for that is ginger. So, um, I mean, I can tell you that later on and expand on that. Another one is diarrhea, next vomiting, constipation, abdominal pain. As you can see, all gastrointestinal related because of that slowing um, effect of, uh, of ozemp or, uh, semaglutide. Another one is ozempic face, ozempic butt, ozempic uh, uh, muscles, ozempic arms. It's the reason that you lose, when you lose weight and you lose um, uh, muscle as well, you actually have saggy, saggy face, saggy arms, saggy butt. It's, it's just that that's why the real problem of semaglutide is there is weight loss and we need to address that. 
because you're only eating almost like one meal a day, thus lower calories, lower protein intake, and also more muscle mass. Another common um, side effect would be hair loss. This is because, again, eating low amount of foods and nutrients, thus you get into this nutrient deficiency that, need, that is needed by your hair to be retained, such as protein and even biotin. So these are the more common ones that I see in clinical practice, but all preventable and resorbable. Okay, so does, does everyone pretty much start with the same dosage? Mm -hmm. uh, not really. So the thing here is we, we, we cater, we, we vary the, the chain, the, the dosing, but you're right. It, it can be used as a standard, but there are patients who, for example, has existing um, abdominal issues already or gastrointestinal issues. You can't go high. You really need to go low on these guys. Okay. And so is this something, is, is this a strategy where you plan to keep them on this forever or is this a strategy where eventually they're going to come off of this? And is, is that, can they, can that happen where they can actually come off the dose that they're on? Um, yes, no, it's not. I always want patients to be only on specific years on this. The risk of thyroid cancer um, is, is still uh, st being studied here. So we still don't know, but again, I, I, you know, me being natural, I always want to be using the, the natural ways of maintaining and losing weight. This is only, only going to be something that will boost them to reach them for their goals. A good example for you, uh, doc, I can't exercise. You want me to exercise? I'm so big. I, my, my knees are going to have knee pain when I run on a treadmill. Okay. We need to trim the top part. So we need to use the medication. And once we've done that, now you go exercise. Okay, so you hit on some of the potential downside, but is there any other contraindications that you would mention uh, to go with this? Right. So the contraindications would be, again, a family history, personal history of um, uh, thyroid cancer, specifically medullary uh, thyroid cancer. And also we, we want to make sure if uh, there is even a hint of thyroid cancer. They don't know what it is. Um, thyroid ultrasounds, blood workup. Um, but for the weight loss part, uh, people who actually, if you do lose a lot of weight so fast, the gal stones, for example, um, even lowering of the blood sugar so fast, especially if it's too strong of a dose, uh, we see a little bit of heart increase, heart rate increase, and even some depression and anxiety, but these are very little. Um, the problem with semaglutide really more is this is the bigger problem, the cost. It's almost 1500 to 1700 per month. And if you have a discount coupon, sure, 1300 um, And again, uh, this is something that one of the, but again, going back, this is more of the economical side rather than the medical side. And usually the most common reason why they discontinue therapy is because of the bad nausea. So uh, do most people have insurance that will cover this or is this out of pocket type thing? Um, again, even with insurance coverage, as I mentioned to you, it's, it's still, it's still going to be expensive, a few hundred dollars here and there. But if you have diabetes, that's an easier way to probably get the medicine. Okay. Okay. So you mentioned that you don't have a long-term strategy. We're just going to keep this, keep people on this forever. But, um, Another question is, is there any, and, and you kind of touched on this a little bit. You said you want to get the hormones right because of the synergy between having the hormones right and then the semaglutide kind of works together. But is there any other therapies or combinations of different things that you use in your protocols uh, with this medication? Yeah. So as I always say, cardiometabolic or weight loss program is not complete without the three pillars, diet, lifestyle, and even exercise. Diet paleo, Mediterranean, keto, autoimmune, anything with high quality protein to maintain the muscle mass. And then exercise, always resistance exercise. You need to build that muscle to prevent the ozempic face, prevent the ozempic butt, right? The ozempic arms. And also when you have a sweet tooth, we could also use what we call um, um, apple cider vinegar. So it can also go and uh, work well with, with, um, with the Govi or ozempic. It's an appetite filler. So there's so many ways on how we do it, but just giving everybody heads up, there's another one out there that's almost a better version of, of semaglutide. It's called terzapatite or manjaro. It's an upgrade. 
And the mode of action is it's dual in action, meaning glucose dependent insulinotropic polypeptide and a GLP-1. So as you can see, it's not only a GLP-1, it has an add-on to the side. And the, do, the, the only lesson that I want to tell everybody here is it has less side effects. It still can cause nausea, but less. It has a lower dose. Uh, it, 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 you use lower doses on this. And you have more weight loss in a faster period of time. It's only also more expensive. But there are other options now. And it's just uh, we're discussing the mother of all where it all started from in terms of weight loss, uh, GLP-1 drugs. Okay, so um, very fascinating. And I guess this just kind of takes your appetite away. Is that it? Most of the time, it slows down. So when, you're, when your GI tract has so much food in it, your body will say, um, no, I'm not ready for that. That's why you get nauseated if you try to put food in your mouth. So that's a wow. more layman explanation of everything. Okay, well, it makes sense. Thanks for doing it that way. So um, if you guys have questions... Put them in the comment section uh, or if they want to reach out to the clinic, is there an easy way to do that, doctor, where they can just reach out to the clinic? Is there a phone number to call or should they go to the website or how can they do that? Yeah, the website is B-I-H-C-I-R-E-N-O.com. And yeah, you set up an appointment. Our number is there, uh, email. So all their uh, social media is all there. It's all accessible. Okay, so that's a way to get a hold of Biointegrative Health Center. And if you guys have questions that you want to put in the comment section, do that. I always make sure that the doctor sees that and so that he can get to those questions. So uh, any, any last thoughts on this, doctor? Again, this is something that uh, I have seen work. And, and there's so many people or practitioners scared about this medicine. But if used the right way, the right strategy you can change your lives with this medicine. And, and I've seen it. And again, uh, I, there's more to come in the, in the, in the pipeline. And it's just going to get better, especially for our cardiometabolic problems. Wow. Sounds positive. All right. Well, thank you, doctor, for your insight and uh, your work on this. And thanks for being with us. Well, Steve, thank you again for having me. As we all know that our knowledge is your power to better health. And thank you for letting me provide you with the longevity and health maintenance, which I call the biological edge or the bio edge.